I'll call the uh, school committee meeting to order this evening. And um, we do have a published agenda. I think that um, in light of sort of some recent events in the beginning of the school year, we're going to readjust the order of things a little bit so that we have our school bus transportation update uh, first. And that will be followed by the audience sharing portion so that we can hopefully address any questions that um, those in the audience might have related to that issue and um, sort of get that taken care of so that those in the audience who are here for that would not have to wait around for the whole meeting unless you want to. So, um, Greg, do you want to take it away? Sure. Um, the first thing I want to start by saying is the transportation launch to the 2019-2020 was not acceptable. Um, for many families, it caused extra stress at a time of year where there are already um, several changes to family routines. And ultimately, it's my responsibility, and I apologize to those families that were impacted. Um, it was not our intention to have it go the way it did. Um, but I also want to thank the families for partnering with us um, to try to correct and resolve some of the issues that families experience. The question I hear most often is, how did this happen? Um, and I want to provide as much information as I can. Um, first, it's important to note that there was a detailed plan, implementation plan developed in the May, in May of 2019 with exact action steps and roles and responsibilities um, to have a seamless transportation implementation on day one um, of the new school year. The plan identified um, each person on the team specific tasks around the process, which included routing, um, communicate, communicating, et cetera. Um, the plan articulated that the 2019-2020 routes would be built from the routes that were that we ended the 2018-2019 school year with, as the routes work for the most part. Then we'd adjust for new students or students who moved within our community, um, but this did not happen. Uh, new routes and stops were created as if we were starting from point A. As a result, new routes were designed and many had significant significant flaws, errors, and were not logical. And due to the specialization of the transportation software, we had one staff member creating the routes, which created a single point of failure in the process. Um, to correct this, we examined, um, we examined every software route uh, to make sure each route was logical, logical and ensured student safety. Um, this work has been completed and vetted by each of our schools. Um, and many of the new routes will be similar to the routes that were in place in June of 2019. On Monday, September 16th, 2019, new software routes will be posted to the district's transportation webpage. Additionally, each student will receive a letter stating his or her bus number and bus stop. The new routes will be implemented on the morning of Tuesday, September 17th, 2019. Um, if there still is an issue with a, with a new stop or safety concern, we're asking parents reach out to the school, um, and then the school will communicate to the transportation department. Um, next week, we'll monitor the timing of our routes more closely with North Running Transportation to address any safety concerns and timing concerns. Um, moving forward, I'm ensuring that multiple staff has expertise in the transportation software and can provide a check and balance in terms of route design. Um, furthermore, there will be increased oversight in the routes created uh, at the district and school level. I'm also forming a transportation advisory committee to support um, the work moving forward and to make sure that this does not happen again and we have a smooth implementation to transportation in the fall of uh, 2020. And lastly, I'd just like to um, you know, thank the community for their patience and cooperation um, as we uh, work to get this right. Thank you. I, I think what we'll do first is if there's anybody on the committee that has questions, and we'll we'll sort of go through that, and then we'll open it up to the audience. And um, I'll just start with uh, with one question, which is that. So does this mean that going forward, I think the thing that I've heard the most from the community is why did the routes completely change? And I think that that wasn't necessarily the goal. And so the, is the goal going forward to have a set of stable routes? that um, are really just modified for add drop scenarios as the as the years we go from year to year. That is correct. So okay. the, the design principle is to start with what you know and what works. Yep. Um, and you know we use a piece of 
software called Transfinder, which is uh, GPS and geocoded. Mm -hmm. So basically, we have those maps we start with, and then we route students who are new to our district or have moved um, over the summer and have a new address, and we make those corrections. So that that is the baseline that we need to start with. Okay. Okay. And then just one one more question for the Transportation Advisory Committee: Does mm -hmm. that do you anticipate having members of the community, if, if parents or people on the, I think, how do you envision that? Um, so I think okay. having uh, parents um, from the community be on that advisory committee. Um, also, there were some suggestions around having bus parents, which I think was an excellent suggestion. So um, the advisory would be members from South Road, North Road, and the region as well, coming together to really talk about how we can improve transportation service and create a vision for transportation. I have a few questions. Um, so you mentioned that the, the adjustment didn't happen. Is the, is the reasoning for this that the person who was in charge of doing this was not capable of doing the adjustment? Or was it because there were insufficient people doing it? What, uh, what was the breakdown in that point? That's my first question. I mean, I think we had, a, we had one person who was trained in the transportation software who had the, the primary responsibility for routing. Mm -hmm. um, so there wasn't the cross training. So. Um, that is where it broke down in terms of there wasn't a way for um, to cross check and have those checks and balances in terms of route design. Uh, my other question is around communication because that was the other um, issue that I heard a lot from parents too is that the way in which these um, issues, and I understand it's a kind of evolving, changing mm -hmm. thing over time, but um, you know, that. So at least I, I heard that there were some complaints brought early on a, a couple of weeks before the buses even went out that there were some issues with the routes and uh, what was happening at that point was the were they fixing it what was going on and then how do we communicate this to parents in a way that I think eases their stress so that this doesn't happen in the future that there's less confusion so the, the plan um, had the routes designed by um, the first week in August mm -hmm with a goal of getting the routes to North Reading Transportation. Um, North Reading Transportation then providing the routes to the drivers for feedback. Those, that feedback would be given back to us if we implement those changes and then publish the routes based on, on that feedback. So um, the routes were created um, the first week in August. We'll finish the first week in August, given to North Reading Transportation. Um, and then there was from their feedback, there was uh, no new implementation changes from their feedback. So that's one of the, the points of failure that we experience. But in the, you know, the goal is to have the routes designed okay. early in August, to start from a point where we know what works in terms of routing, making sure that the routes are given to the bus drivers so they can um, examine the routes. Also, a key uh, key players in this, key stakeholders are the schools. The routes need to be given to the schools to be vetted and reviewed um, early in August um, before they're published uh, to the community and parents and families. And is there, as a follow-up to that, is there someone who can be in charge? Because I know it's hard for you know you're for one for you or the people trying to fix the issue to get all of these parent complaints is probably not efficient for you to be able to. Be fixing. So, I'm, is there some point I, person that can like, disseminate information? I think there is that? a, you know, a component of this is, is internal capacity. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, the transportation um, position is a stipend position. It's on top of someone else's responsibilities. And you know, we are too large of an organization to have it be just a stipend position. Um, but it, additionally, we need uh, to build capacity around making sure that. There are people who can provide the level of oversight that is required to make sure that this happens correctly. You know, I, as a superintendent, um, you know, would love to be at that level of detail in every every component of our operation, but it's not practical. So we need to make sure that we have the capacity for people to be able to do that and support the work and double check to make sure it's accurate. Okay. Yeah. So that, that was kind of my question: like, what can we? as a school committee maybe do this year to help support you guys so this doesn't happen again? So, um, so this will be a topic in our combined um, meeting. Um, we're, we're talking about the organizational uh, growth plan. Yeah. And part of that planning um, speaks to growing capacity 
at the central ops to be able to handle um, our operations in a way that provides great service to the families. Um, so that will be a conversation that we will uh, have at our next combined meeting next Wednesday. And so can I go back, I'm going back to our, we just had a meeting on bargaining, collective bargaining and listening well and taking everything in the right way. So now with that in mind, um, I want to go back to what you originally said. So you, you said that the, I think that the roofs were supposed to be built from the previous year and that didn't happen, but I, I don't think I caught why. What happened? So, um, so basically last year at RT, um, <coughs> routed did all of our routes, and, and that um, had its challenges in its own. Um, so we actually took the routes back on in district um, so we could have more control and more accountability uh, to the routing. Um, the way NRT routes is that they have, they have many um, customers, so they have many surrounding communities, but they have over 120,000 students that they route they have one gigantic map. We are one subset in terms of the maps that, that, um, that they have. Um, but they, basically they have a, lot, a map of, you know, of uh, Massachusetts and all of their, their communities. Um, they can't extract just their maps or just our maps and give us our maps. So the process was rebuilding those maps. And that's where um, some capacity and knowledge and, and execution did not happen. Good question. <coughs> so I know we recently did a, a bus study as part of the school start time. Yeah. Was that done <coughs> to be in use this year or if not, will it be going forward? So I think it provides um, some great data around um, you know, scenarios and options for starting school later. Um, I don't think that the situation and experience that we had this, you know, this past couple of weeks that it, it addresses those issues uh, in terms of capacity, expertise, and making sure that um, there's some little specialized training. I, I thought they were supposed to be looking at what the buses, what the routes are today. For, they did. They were last year. I and that's say. what they did. Yes, but they just they just took. Um, a snapshot, they took a snapshot of time, a two week window, analyzed the routes during that two week window um, for whether it was feasible to start time to different scenarios in terms of school start time. Okay. Anything else? Okay. okay. Uh, so now we'll move on to the audience sharing portion. If there's anybody in the audience who would like to speak, we welcome your comments. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, my name is Alan Belmiak. I've got two students at one in sixth grade and one in fourth grade, so I appreciate the opportunity. It's my first school committee meeting, so it's nice to see the inner workings. Um, so just a couple, a couple thoughts. I don't want to rehash anything you've already said. Your update was informative. I don't want to go over anything you've already, already said. Um, but just to share a few things. I don't want to speak for the entire town, but this community wants you to succeed, probably more than you know, because our children's livelihoods and, 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 and hearts are, are in your hands. So um, not, and that begins with the transportation and of course within the educators as well. So I think the idea of forming a parental um, supervisory board is a great idea. Um, and I'd like to volunteer to be on that. So if there's capacity, um, officially raising my hands and that and we chat about that, so that's great. Um, the one question I have is <clears throat> we talked about reverting back on the 16th and 17th to looking at some prior routes. I don't want to point this out, but what happens if that doesn't work? <laughs> so we, um, you know, can I, do you mind if I respond to the question? Not at all, okay. oh, please, please. So you do, usually an audience sharing is not a give and take. Oh, I'm sorry. So, but I will I, I think for, the, for yeah. these purposes. So I think we have, um, we have vetted these routes um, through a, num a number of um, key people, including building principals, um, admin assistants. Um, we've looked at what, where we left off last year. We're using our transponder software. So we are, you know, uh, 
you know, can't give you a hundred percent guarantee, but we are um, confident that these work, these routes will be much more logical, um, much more convenient. Um, but that's not to say that they're going to be perfect, um, and there will be people who still have some concerns, and those concerns should be communicated. But they were built; these these new routes for launching were built on where we left off in the, the spring of last year as the baseline. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sure. We're piloting this, um, the, right, the GPS. Is there any thought to moving that forward on more buses? Because I know that one of the issues was obviously there were some parents who didn't know where their kids were, they couldn't find them, they were on wrong buses, and so like, what can we do to prevent that stuff happening? Particularly yeah, so, we, so I think two things. I think we do have to, I mean, we're in the 21st century. Yeah. There's no reason why we can't um, improve our customer service and provide parents with access to tools and allow them to know where their kids are. Absolutely. I think we are also in the fifth year of a five-year contract with our with North Riding Transportation. And I think when we look for proposals for uh, bus contracts, we need to make sure that we articulate exactly what we want in terms of customer service and tools for parents. Um, I will caution you that there is, um, I have spoken with area superintendents who have implemented um, some of these tools and it does bring another layer of complexity and can bring another layer of confusion if not if not done thoroughly and thoughtfully so the idea of piloting it is to make sure that we do it thoroughly and thoughtfully as a proof of concept before we roll it out to a large group of parents and further cause more frustration okay. thank you for that appreciate it um, Okay, so now we'll sort of resume our, our uh, original agenda. And will we still be an audience sharing if we... We are not still an audience share. Can we continue with any more audience share? Oh, are you sharing something? I would like to share. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. By all means. Um, so, what I'd like to do is I would like to recognize and thank Paul Desmond for his efforts as the past chairman for several years in the South Coast School mm -hmm. Committee. Typically, uh, this acknowledgement or recognition is done at the last meeting of each school committee, of a school committee year where the uh, chairman is stepping down and the chairman is, is taking the reins. But with our superintendents um, also having that be the last meeting, I thought that to do s something else would be to diminish the recognition we were um, it was going on, Christine. Nonetheless, uh, and, and potentially also it would have diminished the recognition I think Paul deserves. Um, Paul, you know, it, um, I think it's been three or four years, with maybe one year in between. That Jerry Capra, I think, was uh, and um, great year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then <coughs> back. Um, I think three words come to mind. I think uh, dedication, uh, conscientiousness, and uh, capability you know, come to mind when I think about the job you did. Um, I'm, I guess I'm the only uh, uh, current member of the board that was uh, actually on the board when you, you started that journey. And uh, I know there were a couple of years where there were, I, I think I'll call them extraordinary uh, efforts uh, and some things that don't necessarily even normally come before the school committee. I was involved in one, and uh, was in a number of meetings that you didn't have to attend, but but you did, uh, and uh, it was um, it was very beneficial. So I think that um, uh, you know as I, as I think about um, the job you did, uh, always kind of keeping the kids first. Um, you know, I was uh, really kind of amazed at your effort, you know. Uh, you've got some big shoes to fill, Katoa, I just want you to know. <laughs> um, so I'd like to thank you um, for, the, for the job you did and the way you did it. And, uh, um, you know, I just want to uh, give you that recognition because I know you deserve it. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Thank you, Robert. Appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the meeting. I would agree with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Anyone else have anything to share? We're all set. Okay. So now we'll move on to sort of the, uh, the more cheerful and happy side of the, <laughs> the beginning of the school year, which is back to school opening. So it's hard to believe that today is the, was the 10th day of the school year, which was like we've been here much longer. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, we welcomed 1,189 students on August 28th. And, you know, I had a chance to visit all of the South Coast schools, and it was amazing to see um, the students and the teachers um, settle into routines. The students seemed um, thrilled to be back. Um, the, the classrooms looked like um, they were definitely right for, for students. And I could tell there was a lot of that extra effort and dedication to making sure that students' first day was um, a success. Um, on August 26th, two days before the first day of school, we had our uh, South Pro uh, gatherings. Uh, so we gathered as three districts, 10 schools, one community of arms. Um, and it was a great opportunity to see our organ learning organization all in one space and, and celebrate the great work that um, we do as, as um, a school system. Um, today we have um, provided some district-based updates and school-based updates. And I want to begin by introducing some new members of uh, the Central Office Leadership Team. We'll hear from each of those members and then we'll move to principal and hear about how um, each school's launch. So first, I'd like to um, in, do introductions. Um, so we have Marie Allen, Director of Student Support Services, who's not a new face. Um, we have Julie Doyle, um, Director of Instructional Technology and Digital Learning. Again, not new. Uh, we have Mary Ellen Dabin, uh, Director of Wellness. Um, so she is not a new face. She is a longstanding Woodward School nurse, um, but she has taken on a new uh, leadership role, and she has hit the ground running. Um, so she's been uh, outstanding in the past couple of weeks with, with all of the Triple E and, and trying to manage, manage that. Um, we have Rebecca Pellegrino, um, Director of Finance and Operations. Um, Heather Richards, Director of Human Resources, who's new. So she has, she comes from Newton Public Schools where they have uh, 3,500 employees. So she stepped down to a small organization where we have 900. <laughs> so this is, this is a much smaller organization for her. Um, we have Rhoda Webb, Interim Assistant Superintendent, and then um, lastly we have Jennifer Super, who is the English language, Interim English Language um, Education uh, Director. And, and Jen is not a new face to our district, as uh, she has worked at Algonquin Regional High School as the EOB teacher for the past couple of years. Uh, so each will give a, a brief update on um, some of happenings in okay. some of the departments. And we'll start with Rhoda. Um, so this summer, our uh, teachers and educators engaged in professional learning, and we saw our teachers um, spend time with math uh, and in social studies to develop curriculum for the new history and social sciences framework. Uh, also in English, exploring co-teaching for our literacy classes at Trottier, as well as um, educators engaging in world-class instructional design and assessment, which allows our teachers and staff to earn the 15 PD in ESL or SEI for licensure, and also our nurses met to learn health office anywhere, an electronic health record. Good evening, so the summer went by very quickly for us. Um, as you know, um, we have been undergoing our growth plan, and so we welcome some new members to our team this summer. Um, Caroline Willard, who is the regional financial coordinator, moved into the finance and operations administrator role, um, leaving her position vacant. And last week, we welcomed Michelle Lemayne into that position. Um, in addition to staffing changes, we also um, went through a move. Um, Synopsis is a company who um, donated uh, furniture to our district, and so our offices um, underwent a transformation, and we were able to bring all staff into one office so that we were able to better work together and also collaborate. Um, we have been working closely with the town to close out fiscal year 19 and also to begin the work of um, fiscal year 20, and believe it or not, fiscal year 2021 20, is upon us soon as well. We're starting with that planning. Um, and last week marked the first full payroll for our staff, so it was a busy time in our office.
practice, and you can see um, that I have a number of warrants um, for all of the purchases that were made over the summer to get ready um, for the uh, for this school year that we are currently in. Um, employees are now using the web portal um, to obtain their pay stubs, so that has been a cost savings and also a time savings for us as well. Thank you. Jen. Um, just right here. Um, so, um, Actually, if you can come up to the mic. Oh, absolutely. <coughs> um, welcome, everybody. Um, as Greg had introduced me, my name is Jen Suger, and I'm the Interim Director of English Language Education for the North Borough and South Borough Public Schools. Um, I am pleased to report that we had a vibrant summer program this past summer. It was held at Z School in Northborough and um, for three weeks in August, the week of August 5th through the 22nd. Um, I want to give a special thank you to Mrs. Souls, the principal at Z School, for housing our program and also the custodial staff there for working around us. They were very kind. Um, the English learners from Northborough and Southborough in grades 1 through 12 were uh, had attended this program at the Z School. There were 51 students in attendance, with 16 of them being from Southborough this summer. In addition to the students, there were teachers, a coordinator, and bilingual student volunteers from Algonquin and Millican. Uh, the focus of this year's summer program was digital storytelling, which involves combining a form of digital media such as images, voice narration, music, text, or motion to tell a story. To create these digital narrations, our English learners used Scratch, which is a programming language developed by the Lifelong Kindergarten Group at MIT. And this digital storytelling provided the students with a unique opportunity to work simultaneously on both literacy and computational thinking skills because the students had to formulate a premise for their story, employ algorithmic and logical thinking as they wrote code to alter their setting, make their characters interact, and sequence events in their plot. And finally, they had to analyze their code and implement de debugging solutions when necessary. While at the summer program, students had many unplugged opportunities as well, as they shared their digital stories with others and even toured the robotics facilities at WPI, where they learned from professors and engineering students. As a true highlight, several of our students even got a chance to drive WPI's competition robot themselves. Overall, this summer's experience developed problem-solving skills in our students that are hopefully transferable to other aspects of their lives. I am truly grateful for the hard work and collaboration of our staff, students, and families for making this year's program a success once again. And I look forward to providing all of you with an update on our Southboro English learners later this year. Good evening. For those of you who don't me, uh, know me, I'm Mary Ellen Duggan. I'm the new district wellness coordinator. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I started my nursing career for 20 years at UMass in pediatrics, and then I moved to Woodward for 15 years, and now I'm on to this new adventure. So I'm uh, excited to take it on. It's only been a few months, but I'm learning a lot, most recently about Triple E. Uh, but before that, before Triple E, during the summer months, we had nurses working in the ESY program where students from all the schools were housed at the high school and Finn school. We were able to work together with our electronic health record system provider to allow the nurses to have access to all the students' records, electronic rec records, and to electronically document, which went for an easy transition from last year through the summer and back to the school. So their electronic records stayed with them the whole time, which was a very smooth transition. Um, the beginning of the school year, as we know, is always busy for the nurses. Um, with new students and all the paperwork that all the parents have to fill out for us. Medical forms, physicals, medication orders, care plans, emergency plans, and newly instituted triple E forms. The paperwork abounds. We have two new nurses in our district at Woodward and at Finn, and they have hit the ground running and are doing an amazing job. We're fortunate to have three per diem nurses in our district to support these bustling health offices. The nurses in the four South Borough schools have been busy since before school started. But in the past 10 days, it's hard to believe it's only been 10 days, 
They have administered 194 medications, performed 141 medical procedures, evaluated 449 students for illness, injury, or social emotional needs, and managed to oversee the application of insect repellent to hundreds of students, <laughs> almost a third of our school population to be exact. <laughs> I'm looking forward to a year of supporting our awesome nurses and promoting health literacy and wellness in our community. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Julie Doyle. Um, for the upcoming school year, the district technology team will be working hard to manage and support devices and infrastructure so that our students and teachers can seamlessly use technology in the classroom. Over the summer, new student and teacher devices were purchased and uh, prepared for use. Um, also, our assistant technology manager, I want to give him a big shout out, TJ Karen, supervised the installation of security cameras in all of the Southboro schools. Our instructional technology specialists spent a lot of time planning and researching ways to help teachers integrate technology into their lessons. One of our goals this year um, is for, to provide more opportunities for all students to engage in coding, like what happened at, at the summer program with the ELL students. Um, also computational thinking and STEM education experiences. Preparations are already in place, organizing special activities for STEM week, uh, which is it's the second annual Massachusetts STEM week, which will take place in October. And it's a statewide effort to boost the interest, awareness, and ability for all learners to envision themselves in STEM education and employment opportunities. We also spent time over the summer working on a system to help manage, evaluate, and streamline all of our online learning platforms. Last spring, we were chosen to be part of a cohort of schools in, the, um, in, in Massachusetts that are trying to come up with a trusted and scalable process to identify and procure high quality instructional products. We're using a tool called Learn Platform to help with this process. Schools pay a lot of money for online platforms, so it's important to measure usage and impact to figure out if it makes sense to continue to fund these digital resources. This platform will also help us manage and inform teachers and parents uh, about student data privacy policies for online programs that are being used in, in the classroom. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Marie Allen, uh, Director of Student Support Services. We began our school year in student support in July, in the beginning of July, with our extended school year program. Our summer was bustling with activity for our Southboro students, mm -hmm. who continued their academic and social learning through our extended school year programming. We offered 15 programs and walk-in services, pre-K through grade 8, to 69 students across two schools, and it was mentioned before at Finn and at Algonquin. Uh, consolidating services to two schools, four from last year, really helped us with a more effective use of staff and resources. Thank you to our custodial staff, and uh, to Principal Ryan, and to Principal Walsh at both Finn and Algonquin for their attention to detail in readying the schools for this summer's programming. We're very thankful for their support and flexibility during the summer months because we realize they're getting the schools ready for the beginning of the school year. This summer we sponsored a new volunteer program involving middle and high school students who earned community service participation as they engaged in social activities with ESY students over five weeks of programming. We had approximately 56 volunteers and some of those students volunteered for multiple weeks and they earned uh, certificates for community service. A new activity was led by this volunteer group each week in the following areas, sports, art, music, dance, and games. Thank you to Principal Lavoie and Principal Walsh for partnering with us to offer student leadership opportunities and to provide an inclusive learning environment for all of our participants. It really went over quite well. We had a lot of good feedback. A special thanks go out, goes out to our ESY coordinator, Helene Desjardins, who did a masterful job in scheduling and coordinating all the programs. Uh, at, at the beginning of the school year, Deb Lemieux and Erica Matthew and I traveled the district during the first few days of school and visited with principals and teachers and students and were available to support our building teams. Mm -hmm. Students and staff were very busily engaged in activities to start this school year. It's been a wonderful start, as was evidenced 
in all of our visits to all of our schools, and our teams are energized and prepared as they begin their new school year. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Let's see if I can put that down a little bit. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you this evening and to be a part of these districts. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. The, uh, getting to know people and the relationships has been, um, building the relationships has been wonderful. Uh, so as you may or may not know, I started July 15th and it hit the ground running right in hiring season. Um, some people say, you work in a school district in human resources, do you have the summers off? <laughs> No, <laughs> um, just, just the five days before school started, I met with and onboarded 26 staff members. So um, my calendar was pretty busy. <laughs> so um, we, we have a new team, um, a, a, the new HR staff. We have Nina Wall and Elaine Chisholm, who the three of us are building our HR team and building capacity to really be able to support employees. And we've been really busy um, helping new staff members with benefits and lane changes and the required compliance training around ethics. So a, a lot of these startup things at the beginning of the school year. So um, I'm just really happy to be here and um, look forward to new adventures with you. Thank you. Now we'll move on to our yes, well, um, As Marie mentioned, Finn was a very busy place over the summer with their summer program um, and our garden. Mm -hmm. I have to give a shout out to our garden and the many families that maintained the garden and harvested the huge bounty of vegetables which were donated to the South Grove Food Pantry. I talked to Pat Draper, um, one of the managers of the food pantry, um, before the start of school. And she was amazed at how much families dropped off from our little 10 plot garden. And she said the families were incredibly grateful. Um, I also would like to acknowledge Brian Fantoni, uh, Glee Baba, David Trevino, and all the custodians and students who are part of the summer cleaning crew. They did a tremendous job with our school, making it truly sparkle for our open house in our first day. Um, our open house, as we, as I've mentioned in previous years, was um, the Monday before the start of school, um, and we've done that to help students minimize anxiety and give families an opportunity to come in, see the school, explore the many areas, and have their children show them around the school uh, before the official start. As Heather mentioned, you know, we, we probably have, what, 11 of the 26 new hires at the Finn School in some capacity. Uh, Carolyn Grandberg is a special education aide. Krista Curran, special education aide. Trisha Fruitman, our new school nurse, uh, taking the place of Dale Burgess, who retired last year. Jessica Noak, special education aide. Hilary Blood, um, occupational therapist. Joan Provencial, who is taking Tracy King's position as clerical aide in the front office, Wanda Ruiz, special education aide, Car Catherine Sable, kindergarten aide, Emily Silva, our new behavior specialist, Holly Stout, special education aide, Erin Whiting, speech and language therapist, and Faith Richards, who is a preschool tutor. Um, our two days back for staff were incredibly productive. We did a lot of work on our sensory path and our Lego wall. And I have to give a shout out to <laughs> carpenter Steve Nucci, <laughs> who actually did the installation of the, the wall, the frame, um, with the teachers that uh, put the, the grant together. Kids are very excited about it. In addition to that, we have sensory paths and we have sensory walls now in the Finn School, which makes the transition to and from classrooms or in and out of the school uh, incredibly engaging for our students. We're working on when to use it because anytime they pass, they're trying to play with Legos and they're doing some of the uh, sensory work. 
Uh, we ended our first week on Friday with our first care program with the famous Johnny the K. He was here and he was also at the Woodward School. Um, I facilitated our first parent coffee we, where I gave a general overview of Finn, volunteering opportunities, some parenting uh, advice on having kids getting a good night's sleep, the start of the school year, an adjustment. Um, that will be published on our website. Uh, and lastly, I really want to give credit to the incredible staff that we have at the Finn School. Last year, we, I organized a uh, move, including nine teachers from their existing classrooms to new locations to allow our preschool program to all have bathrooms in their classrooms. Uh, it was a huge undertaking. Teachers were packing at the end of the year over the summer, unpacking, and they all did it with um, a sense of appreciation and a student-centered focus. So uh, tremendous, tremendous work and rallying for them. So. That's it for Finn. We're off to a great start and excited for another year. Um, so I'll start by saying I assume no responsibility for this Lego wall. <laughs> <laughs> I have that in writing. So I just want to make sure that that's out there on film somewhere. Um, so I want to start by thanking Ed Mercer and Joe Mancini for preparing our building. Um, it was in wonderful shape for, for arrival of students. Um, especially like to thank Brian Fantoni for organizing all the, the many projects that took place at Woodward this summer. Um, some of those projects included um, painting a majority of the classrooms. We had our, our gym floor completely stripped, sanded, and repainted, and it does rival some high school uh, and college courts. Um, if you have a chance, I would love to invite you in to see the, the brand new gym floor. Um, we installed a new climbing wall in the gym as well, um, which once that gets up and running, it'll be a great resource for our students. Um, we also welcome the Reach One classroom as part of the Asset Valley Collaborative. Um, that classroom was formerly at Trottier, so they're finding a new home with us at Woodward. Um, I'm going to let Brian um, Fantoni speak to the driveway project. It was quite an undertaking, and um, he would have uh, all the details on that. Um, this year, we welcome new staff. Kelly Kiley is our new school nurse. Jocelyn Kelly is a new second grade teacher. And Megan Duchesne changed roles from special ed to a third grade teaching position, as well as Lisa Goulet, who changed roles from a classroom teacher to a special ed position. Um, we welcome Laura Kirk, Kristen Delaney, Lauren Lightbody, Nancy Villiers as educational support professionals. So we're very lucky to have all of those new staff on board. Um, we began our year uh, Tuesday, August 27th. We held our annual open house. Um, as Principal Ryan mentioned, we had a great turnout. It's a, a wonderful opportunity for kids to come in and see the building, um, get those first day jitters out of the way, um, share the, the learning space with their parents and classmates. We had about 90% of the students attend, which um, we we're extremely happy with. Um, I hosted my first principal coffee around the topics of volunteering and how to be, become involved as parents in our school community. Um, we also had our first care assembly where we had Johnny the K come share his positive message around character traits, um, linking back to all of our care themes for the year. So that was a great way to kick off the school year. Um, a big thanks to our SOS who sponsored that. Um, today we had our first walking school bus of the year with about 25 walkers. We're really proud of that. Um, we had parents, staff, and kids um, you know, walk to school today in a kind of a humid morning, but it was still um, a really nice way to, to kick off the year. Um, finally, finally, I'd like to recognize the entire Woodward staff for a great opening. Um, when posed with specific challenges around transportation and significant warning levels around Triple E, all staff have stepped up to do what's best for kids, and uh, I want to recognize that. Um, putting in long hours and late nights and showing great flexibility around scheduling. Um, I'm extremely proud of the entire staff. I really can't say enough about their efforts. And aside from those relatively small issues um, already discussed, we've had a great opening for students. On to Mary. Okay, so um, just as um, Principal Ryan and Principal Mochi said, it, we can't thank our custodians enough and to Brian Cantoni for leading the way. Mike Daigle, our head custodian, Claudio De Silva, our second shift custodian, really worked hard this year to prepare Mary, and it looked fantastic on opening day. As a staff, we kick the year off thinking about what is our why, and reading the book, The Coffee Bean. If you haven't read it, please read it. It's a great message. Um, we have new teachers, a new teacher that joined our team, Catherine Ledger, who was an educational support professional, and now she's a fourth grade teacher. We brought on board Carolyn Hull, Evangelina Stadi, and Francesca Cavallo as new ESPs. 
so we're thrilled to have them on board. Kudos to our teaching staff for incredible preparedness, uh, working collaboratively to get classrooms ready, uh, distributing supplies and welcoming students on our first day. And a big thank you to our SOS for distributing the first day supply kits on the hottest day of the summer. <laughs> uh, they brought their student, their children in, and it was really um, quite a collaborative effort. And it was nice to have some liveliness in the school while it's quiet. Um, so, so thank you to all of them. Our first annual open house went really well. And we were able to welcome families in. We had 222 families join us. Uh, so that was very exciting. And we had our ice cream social. We moved it inside because of the triple E threat, but it was well attended and a uh, little bit of melting ice cream, but that's <laughs> okay. It was, it was great, and uh, we look forward to continuing that uh, practice. We have two new spaces at Miri. We have a Zen Den, which we're going to be adding a sensory space to as well with our new poster maker that we're able to make um, sensory stickers out of. So we're excited about that. And we added some flexible hallway seating as well to encourage collaborative work amongst our students. 10 of, the, of our 14 rooms now have the red cat light speed system. Last year, David Finner and, and Kristen Tav came and shared. Well, now we have 10 of our 14 rooms with our goal is to uh, fulfill all of the rooms by the end of the school year, hopefully. And so we're excited about that. We're continuing to encourage uh, students and staff to choose kind. Our common language is tied to our care themes and caught caring high five stickers um, continue to be a focus for us <coughs> using five new phrases be ready, be responsible, be respectful, be kind, and be safe. And we're celebrating student and staff successes uh, as, as we work towards being positive role models. At our first Friday farewell, which technically became a terrific Tuesday. So we had to move it. Um, we unveiled our six foot sign that says, Be the I in kind. And the I is, um, there isn't an I, so students stand in the place of the I. So we're connecting that to our caught caring. When students get caught caring, they'll be standing at our, at our big sign. So please come and take a look or, and stand in the I. <laughs> uh, um, we completed our whole school recess survey, which is exciting. We use that to identify how students are viewing the recess time, making, connect, make, uh, making sure students have connections, planning recess groups, and there's a section on the um, survey that, is there anything you'd like to tell Mrs. Bundy? I love reading it. <laughs> it's great. I hear a lot. I, hear, I learn a lot, and I, I, I value that teachers took the time to have the students take the survey because it really helps to guide a lot of our work. And again, making sure students have connections to adults and in their peers. SOS brought in an amazing show last week called The Amazing Hero. Amazing Hero Art with Rob Surrett, which focused on kindness and heroes, which connects directly to our care and kindness themes. And if you haven't seen him, please Google it. There was not a dry eye in our, in our, um, in our event because it, it was so moving. And he creates portraits while talking about kindness and sharing about heroes. And at the end, thanks to the kindness of the SOS, they purchased, purchased two portraits, one of Abraham Lincoln and one of Martin Luther King Jr. And they're six foot by four foot. They're massive and those will hang in our dining room. So we're super excited about that and thank you to the SOS for doing that. Our volunteer, our principal's coffee was well attended this morning. It was great to connect with uh, former parents, as current parents that we've had uh, for fifth grade, now fourth grade, now fifth grade, and new fourth grade parents. So it's really, really nice to be able to meet with them. Our DARE officer, uh, Aaron Richardson, has already been in. He's setting up his DARE training with our fifth grade teachers, and he's making time to get into lunches and get on the playground with our friends. We continue to communicate as much as we can about the wonderful things that are that's happening at Miri through our virtual backpack, our website, uh, some more, and our social media. And our first school council meeting is um, <coughs> October 10th. So we're so excited and looking forward to a terrific year. Thank you. Well, I'll wrap up the schools and talk about uh, Toronto here. 
Um, we also had a good start. Brian is going to be speaking shortly, but a thank you to him and the crew. Like everyone said, it is no, it's not a small task to get the buildings ready, but he and the team do an amazing job. And for our students, the start of the year really started with a mindfulness moment that extended um, itself. So we brought in uh, Nina Bryce from IBME, which is Inward Bound Mindfulness Education at a Concord, and she really did an amazing job inspiring um, our teachers and then our students to really think about the small things that make mindfulness very effective for them as an individual, which will ultimately land to more effective ways for them to interact with each other. So we got a lot of awesome feedback about that, which is going to lead to future opportunities and, and Gary and the team and I are kind of talking about that, surveying and get a sense of what we're going to do next. So it's really been a nice springboard and a great way to start the year. I do have some sad, note, uh, sad news to share. Uh, some of you uh, may have heard this already, but uh, the Stone Environmental Center in Madison, New Hampshire has closed its doors. Oh. Unfortunately, the uh, operator of that and owner of that program uh, passed away unexpectedly last June, and we just became aware of it in mid-August. So we were able to, uh, Gary has uh, especially been in contact with uh, his wife, his name was Dave Fries, and we've known Dave for 30 years now. Um, and it was, it was very sad to get that news, but uh, uh, we are going to have to move forward and think of new alternative opportunities, which Gary actually was on the phone with someone today about. So it's an active process that we're getting involved in. So since 1981, Stone has been an establishment that we've uh, in engaged with. So we are uh, very sad about that. We had a lot of upset teachers that have phenomenal memories, and thousands of students have walked through their doors because of it. So uh, we will be uh, reviewing that as the year unfolds and not certainly not rushing into any decisions about what to do next. So that's on the horizon on a, on a, on a negative note. I also have some new staff to introduce on a very happy note. Uh, we're very excited about them. We have two new ESPs in our NEC partnership program, Lauren Casidio and Carly Soder, who have done an amazing job getting to know our students and really diving in. We also have a new inclusion program, ESP Katie Dunell, who came back to us. She was with us in our CASEL program for a couple of years and couldn't, get a, couldn't stay away. So she came back and filled a, a very tough vacancy of one of our longtime ESPs. So I'm very excited to have her on board. As far as an announcement's concerned, tomorrow night is curriculum at Trotty, or the other buildings uh, started their open houses. Ours is tomorrow, um, and we're going to have dozens of our 8th graders volunteering, helping parents, especially our new 6th grade parents, navigate the building and follow a Tuesday schedule. So they will follow a mini Tuesday schedule and really get the feel of what their day is like for, for their students. So we're really excited about that. And, and certainly, you know, as has been mentioned, our, a huge credit to our teachers for getting prepared for the school year. Um, they have done a lot of good work over the summer. Rotor mentioned some of it. Um, I supervise some of it as well. And this place was hopping in mid-August with people preparing their classrooms and, and getting ready. So a huge appreciation uh, for, for their work in getting us, uh, getting us started. Um, so thank you for this opportunity. I know the principals really like sharing the news at the start of the school year, but I, I will be out with a, if we can bring up Mr. Fantoni and let you know about some of the projects that are going on, if that makes sense. Okay, so if we actually can have Brian speak when we um, have the Oh, you can do that? Okay. okay. Great. But I, I, didn't want like, steal, I didn't want to steal the stunt. Yeah, he, he's he's got a great show, show, ready to go. Yeah. But I just want to also um, commend the principal and the leadership team for all their hard work. I think we're one of the only businesses that actually has a stop date in June, takes a break over the summer and starts up again in, in August. Um, and the amount of energy it takes to launch a new school year and preparation and the attention to detail um, is very impressive. And um, I get to see every day these folks working collaboratively as a team. Um, and they actually have fun working together. So I get to observe that every day. Um, I just want to personally thank you for a great start um, and being great colleagues. And I uh, look forward to a great year. And I'll, I'll just say, having been in a couple of the buildings, it's the energy is palpable. Every, you can just tell everyone's excited to be back. So it's really wonderful. Thank you for all that. OK, so we'll move on to our next item, which is legislative update. So in your packet, there were uh, two documents. One was um, a resolve creating a special commission to study school starting times and schedules. So I know that's been um, work that the district is endeavoring to make a decision on, and I just thought it was important to share that 
at the state level, um, there's some momentum building as well. Um, and also in your packet is um, the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents, um, and just some updates on their position on Foundation Budget Review Commission's recommendations. Um, and basically, the Promise Act, um, there's some discrepancy about how long it will take to implement the commission's recommendations. Um, the governor's uh, proposal is over a seven-year period, and the Promise Act is over a five-year period. So it's something we'll want to keep an eye on in terms of our advocacy for implementing many of the, the commission's recommendations. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is the Finn School Boiler Feasibility Study. So in January of last year, we submitted three statements of interest to MSBA. Um, one was for the Finn School Roof, and, as well as the Trottier, and as well as the Finn Boiler. And as you know, we were accepted um, to enter into MSBA's accelerated repair project through the Finn Boiler. Um, so part of that <coughs> process is to allocate funding for schematic design. Um, so this evening we need a, a motion and a vote cert, cert, um, certifying funding for this thin elementary boiler schematic design. Okay. So I provided a motion. We have the um, language. So it has to be specific. So I, I volunteered to put this motion on the floor. Thank you. <laughs> um, because it, um, these motions for a certification of funding um, um, require uh, Nothing to be left out. We need to be uh, precise. Um, I'm going to read this. It's only two sentences long, but I also want to disavow any responsibility for the length of the first sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would like to move to see if the school committee will vote to transfer $70,000 from the Southboro Public Schools Facilities Rental Revolving Account to be expended under the direction of the school department for the purposes of the schematic design phase of the accelerated repair program project for the replacement of the boiler installation at the Mary E. Finn Elementary School located at 60 Richards Road in South Borough, Massachusetts, including the payment of all costs incidental trying to make it through it, I this word, incidental or related thereto and for which the town of Southboro may be eligible for a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, the MSBA. The second sentence is the MSBA's grant program is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need <coughs> as determined by the MSBA and any costs the town incurs in connection with the schematic design phase in excess of any grant approved by and received from the MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the town. Thank you. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right, all in favor? Okay. And I will say, for my sure that this language came from MSBA's legal counsel. I believe it. <laughs> 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 Sounds having, like. Uh, <laughs> having, read, having read legal you know, presentations before, I absolutely would. I'm actually surprised it wasn't just one sentence, but uh, <laughs> they got a period. Semicolon. Yes. Okay. Anything else on that, or is that? That is. So, we, so okay. we'll move into the schematic design. Um, yeah. we'll, um, once we have the schematic design, that will be reviewed by MSBA, and then they'll make a final decision on whether to um, continue forward with the project. Okay. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Okay. So now we'll do old business, uh, public safety building update. So this is just a general update, and I thank you um, to the town administrator, Mark Perkle. He has uh, been amazing in terms of a partner, in terms of considering Woodward School and making sure we have the proper fences and um, addressing any of our concerns. I'd also like to thank Steve Mucci and Brian Fintoni um, for taking the initiative and taking the lead on this project and making sure that it went well for Woodward, and we also made some accommodations for um, the town. Um, but uh, town administrator Mark Kogel has been outstanding and has been an excellent partner throughout this process. That's wonderful. Okay, uh, school safety update. So school safety continues to be a top priority um, and throughout each school year we conduct uh, safety drills such as Alice and evacuation drills um, and we continue to partner with our town safety officials. 
Um, and this year, one thing we're doing that's new is partnering with Sandy Hook Promise Organization, and we're launching um, the Say Something uh, program. Basically, the Say Something program provides education to middle school and high school students to recognize signs of uh, mental distress. It gives them different ways to um, communicate that to adults. There's al also an anonymous uh, app that um, concerns can be submitted, um, and there's a process in which those are then vetted um, and then brought to the school's attention for, for action. So we'll be rolling that out in the next um, couple months, but it's a, it's a nice partnership and another tool that we're added, adding to our um, school safety efforts. Okay, uh, next is uh, 2019 to 2020 subcommittee and liaison assignments. So in your packet is a draft of um, assignments. And we, if uh, you have not yet provided the Tora with what you're interested in, in joining, please do so. But I think this is information that we have thus far. Okay. So I would, I would add that one thing that is not one subcommittee is we are starting a, um, a pre-K through 12 music study group um, to evaluate and assess our pre-K through 12 music program across our three districts. Mm -hmm. So that is one subcommittee that is not listed that we are looking for a school committee member um, to be part of that work. Okay. And all these ones with blanks don't need somebody right now or do we need We've historically had some blanks yeah, when, think, when things aren't active. I think we did go through the, um, if there's a blank, it's, it's not an active yeah. site committee at this point. Study is not a uh, line item on this right now. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to superintendent's report to the committee. First is update on summer projects. So now I get to introduce Ryan Fantoni. Uh, and I, before he um, speaks and shares all the great work that happened, I just like to thank Brian for his hard work and dedication. There were a lot of moving parts um, this summer, a lot of large projects, and Brian handled um, all projects seamlessly. Um, I don't think I saw him sweat once, well, maybe once, <laughs> maybe once. Um, but he, he, was, um, you know, he was on top of each project and communicated to us what the needs were. And in addition to main, uh, managing those large projects, he also um, managed to have his team um, thoroughly clean prepare our buildings for the launch of the school year, which is no small feat on a normal year. So, so Brian, thank you. And you know, I'd, like, I'd love to have you share the summer projects and the work that was accomplished. All right, so I'll just give a quick update. Um, glycol, I know that was a hot topic last year. Um, we were finally able to accomplish that in the buildings, get the heating and cooling systems flushed out, back to where they need to be, so we're all ready and set to go for the heating season. Um, we're probably in the best shape that we've been, as far as that's concerned, in years. Uh, I'm also looking into implement, uh, implementing a preventive maintenance plan to extend the life of the heating systems, so hopefully we're not going through this again. Um, the Woodward parking lot, Steve mentioned that briefly. Um, we were able to improve the safety for staff and students. Um, we added crosswalks, the flow of traffic for the buses. Um, I believe we added an extra handicap spot. Um, and that, that's been going well with the buses. I'd like to recognize and thank Karen Galligan for her work with that project. Um, she really took the lead with a lot of it and 
it kind of came down to the wire, but we snuck it in. It was a little, I think we've been sweating a little bit at that point <laughs> uh, to get that in, but um, that's all been going well. Um, Steve mentioned the Woodward Gym. If you go over there, he's probably gonna ask you to take your shoes off. <laughs> doesn't want anybody in there. <laughs> um, we were also, by having these projects at Woodward, um, we basically closed the building to staff and programs for the summer, so we were able to get a majority of the inside of the building painted over the summer, so that was another added benefit to that. Um, let's see, uh, we also, through, um, at the request of police and fire, we've numbered all our exterior doors in all our buildings to more of a national standard. Um, so that any emergency responders won't be guessing, you know, what door A1 means or that. And they kind of used us as a pilot program and they want to roll this out with the rest of the town. So all the town buildings will follow the same format. Um, let's see. I'd also like to thank uh, the custodial staff and recognize them. Um, as Greg mentioned, there was a few uh, extra bumps in the road this year that we're not used to and, and the crew really rallied together. And uh, a lot of people worked outside the box and did some things they weren't used to doing, but everybody did it, and they did a great job to get the buildings open and looking good and ready to go. Thank you. Thank you. It looks great, the outside of Woodburn. Yeah. So next in your packet is um, the capital plan update. Um, so as we begin the uh, FY21 budget season, um, the budget uh, subcommittee will be reviewing the capital plan um, to make sure that it's updated. We've, um, Brian has also reached out to Karen, uh, Karen Dalgan to look at all of our um, parking lots and to do a master plan in terms of paving and what that would look like. Um, we're also looking at um, continuing to look at the roofs at Finn and Trottier um, and submitting the SOIs again through MSBA's accelerated preparing project. But this document will be um, updated in the next few weeks as we meet as a subcommittee. Okay. Also in your packet is um, September 2019 enrollments. Um, our projected enrollments uh, for FY20 was 1,185. And on August 28th, we uh, welcomed 1,189. So we were four students off. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to commend um, Mr. Ryan for um, his almost exact, I think those four students came from kindergarten, so I think that we, we welcomed 138K students this year and our projection was 134, so, um, so we were very close, with little variants, and we are, are within our class size policies across all of our uh, classrooms, pre k Also in your packet is the um, Final FY19 end of year general fund expenditure report. Um, I'm pleased to share that if you look on the last page, um, the balance is zero. Um, so I would like to commend um, Becky Palgrino and her team for all the hard work that goes into actually closing out a fiscal year. Um, it takes a tremendous amount of effort and attention and detail, um, and the team did a great job. And, um, we will need to have a vote. Uh, vote to to approve to apply. Okay. Yep. I'll move that we approve the final fiscal year 2019 end of the year general fund expenditure report for June 30, 2019 until July. Also, in your. Um, Give me a second. Oh, sorry. Second. <laughs> okay. All right. Discussion? All in favor? So also in your packet is the FY20 uh, 20 budget. So as we were concluding one fiscal year, we were launching another. Um, so again, that takes a tremendous amount of work and the financial department did an outstanding job. Um, there are just significant variances at this time. And our bottom line at this point is 7.5%, 7.5, 7.54% um, and last year at this time we were at 6.87%. So we're tracking very similar to where we were at this time last year. Okay. You need a vote, vote to approve all of it? I'll move for the 2020 budget and we approve the monthly general fund expenditure report 
as of August 31st, 2019 until on. Second. So in your packet is also the FY 2021 school committee budget priorities. So these were our budget priorities for FY 20. So at our, uh, my recommendation is at our October meeting, we um, have a discussion around what our priorities should be. But this is kind of our point for us to um, consider what those might be. We'll be able to take out the kindergarten yes. line item. Yep. And then uh, next is the proposed um, FY 2021 uh, budget calendar. Um, and we have included the dates that we know about. And as we know, this is a fluid document as the budget process moves forward. Um, and to the initial start. Can I ask a question about that, which I'm not sure any of us know the answer to the selectman in the earlier actually So there is no even week determined yet for ten meetings, is that true? So, so a tentative date is March twenty eighth. So that is a ten Saturday. So, so that's a, so that's a tentative date. Yeah, that's um, been made tentative by the board of selectmen, as far as we know. So I, I received a um, communication today that 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 is the date that is being discussed as potentially the time we So I'll confirm mm -hmm. that. Uh, well, I had mentioned um, the importance of knowing what that date was because it does certainly uh, make a big difference. Uh, you know, to some of the school principals, you know, as far as. Um, Activities, etc. So that, that would be great if they would um, they would hold to that date, but that's still only tentative. It is, and, and we are starting the budget process in the next uh, week or two to make sure we have enough time to do a thorough job and accommodate any <coughs> whatever date is decided. Thank you. This is a similar schedule to last year. It is when the early town meeting. Right. But I'm not only thinking of the of the accelerated uh, budget process that we have, but also you know dealing with a specific date, yeah. you know, which uh, affects people. Yeah, absolutely. And that concludes the superintendent's report. Okay. All right. So next is uh, educational policy. None at this time. Policy development distribution. None at this time. Um, personnel items distribution of personal report and new staff appointments. So in your packet are, there's a list of leaves of absence, resignations, and transfers. So as Heather Richards mentioned, it was a very busy month of August and beginning of September. Okay. Okay. So we'll start with the all right, next is communications, back to school newsletter. So you have your back to school newsletter um, that went out to the community on August 15th. Um, next, we have the North Annisboro uh, District Read. So we have our um, three district, 10 schools, one community of readers. And this year, um, the, the book is The Gift of Failure by Jessica Leahy. Um, so you have a copy of the book. We also will be having Jessica uh, come and speak um, on March 25th um, as part of the book series. So um, we'll be communicating more community about this opportunity. Looks interesting. It, yeah. yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it makes you think. Yes. It's important. What was that date? Um, March 25th. Mm -hmm. Next is um, a letter of um, thank you for donations from Synopsis, as um, Becky mentioned, we received a phone call um, this summer from Synopsis stating that they were moving and were donating furniture. Um, so we jumped on the opportunity, um, and as a result, we were able to do some um, remodeling of some of our office 
spaces and upgrading of office spaces due to their damage to our mission. We have um, a new, new to us conference table and new conference chairs, um, and it, it makes uh, the space look much more professional and much more comfortable. Um, so the donation was greatly appreciated. have a um, acknowledgement letter, um, Lindsay Sherman, so her participation in the UMass uh, role of Symphonic Band Camp. So they sent us a letter thanking uh, us and acknowledging our participation in that camp. So it was nice to hear that our educators are doing great things for the community. We have the 2019-2020 NSC Pack calendar um, of events um, listed. And I think the first NSPAC general meeting is scheduled for um, October 11th. And that will be held in the South Pearl Library at 10 a.m. Just to, if I may, just to backtrack. So is there any requirement, I'm guessing there is not, um, to have a, uh, any kind of vote to accept non-monetary donations? Absolutely. That's a good question. I'll just yeah. check. I, I, I think council. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because I mean, would be sort of housekeeping to do sure. some meetings and have to. I don't know myself, and I probably should. Okay. I can check with uh, legal council, and actually, we can, uh, if they're required to go go ahead and find it. Perfect. Oh, great. Um, school committee meeting dates. 2019-2020, and just we'll, we'll note that the next October, uh, our next meeting is on a Monday, um, due to holidays. Um, and your packet is the um, information about an MASC, um, the joint conference with MASS, um, and the dates, and again, I would encourage folks to attend if they can. I think it works. It's a great opportunity to network with other school committees, to network with each other, and also engage in professional development. And lastly, uh, distribution of the MGL 2019 Selected Mass General Laws. And I will not tell you how it ends this year. So, uh, but I will say that if you do not want your hard down copy, we will collect them back and um, give those to the principal. Thank you. Okay, uh, next is action on minutes. The meeting of June 12, 2019. I move that we approve the minutes of uh, South Coast School Committee meeting of June 12, 2019. Second. Any comments or discussion? Favor? Very thorough. <laughs> yeah, they're very thorough. <laughs> okay. Uh, approval of bills and payrolls. Um, okay, agenda items for next month. So we have school improvement plan presentation schedule listed. Um, we did have um, the seal by literacy as oh, yeah. from, from the June meeting. Yeah, right. Nice thinking world language. It may be um, worth a placeholder for an update, uh, I guess, uh, of the uh, master plan committee and, you know, um, of, of schools are involved great. in that. Yeah, that's great. I'm just saying placeholder. Put it on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Um, so now we have on the agenda that we're going to enter into executive session. Uh, we need a motion um, that we will do that and not return to open meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. Audience sharing first. Anybody have anything to share? Actually, I have one thing to share. Oh, great. 
so um, just a reminder that we will be having our <coughs> facilities tours on Monday, September 20, 23rd, and that those tours begin at Woodward at 6 p.m. So you actually can see the, um, the floor. She's wow. wearing clean socks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we slide. So, and I will send out a reminder. So. And we'll be uh, joined by members of the advisory, potentially. Okay. Thank you. All right, so now a motion to enter into executive session. Does anybody like to make one? I move that we move into executive session to discuss strategy. Which with respect to collective bargaining, do the chair's determination that the discussion regarding this matter in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the position of the committee with no intent to return to open meeting. Second. Okay, so we'll do a roll call. Um, Aye. 